Hello everybody, enjoying the global warming? Today I'll show you how to build this. So what is this? This is a spectral, well sort of spectral, synth that allows harmonic exploration of almost any recorded sound. Let me explain. Had you watched some of my previous videos, you would know that I'm slightly obsessed with the harmonic series, which states that a sound is not just one note, but it's actually made up of many frequencies that follow the harmonic series. More of that later and links in the description. So today we'll learn a new technique exploiting the harmonic series to turn a recorded instrument into a spectral synth using a sampler. In my case, of course, contact. However, although I'm going to show you how to build the instrument and the concept behind it, I will work on a special version of this instrument that I will give away at the 1000 subscriber mark. This special version of the instrument will allow you to turn any of your samples into a spectral synth for unlimited, almost unlimited, sonic exploration and performance. If you don't want to miss this, subscribe and select the uh, all notifications thingy uh, below so that you know when and where so let's get busy oh look at this place step number one let's find an interesting instrument to record in germany they like their flea markets and that's a good starting point for an affordable instrument so let's go and visit one This is it. The gentleman said it's 100 years old. At 7 euros, dollars, pounds, you can't go wrong. The problem is, I have no idea what this is. Initially, I first saw the lower part and I thought something went wrong in Amsterdam. But then I realized that it is indeed a sort of uh, musical instrument. A Google search for ethnic instruments um, gave me nothing, so I think I'll have to resort to my chromophonic shape DNA AI. Helga, can you bring up the app, please? Shape AI scanner initialized. Okay. Shape match detected. Put it up on screen. Best match from the Smithsonian. A Nepali Sarangi. From Nepal, interesting. And this specific one? Please activate the NR scanner. Um, yeah, sure. Quality assurance, check. Analyzing, match found. Can you bring the analysis up on screen, please? Live feed. Live feed in three, two, one. Okay, transfer it on my big screen, please. It turns out that this instrument is a Nepalese sarangi, exclusively played by the gangs that belong to a Nepalese musical cast, the Kadharvas. They are mainly musicians and singers, offering infotainment to the various isolated communities across the mountains of Nepal, in the form of songs about stories, myths, legends. Interesting. Wonderful. It will be my honor to record this cultural Nepalese instrument. I'm going to use a bow because I don't have the original one. Now let's prepare our samples. We bring it in our dough of choice, in my case Cubase, and uh, we give it a listen. So the sample preparation process involves three steps. The first step is to insert Paul Xstretch, a free plugin which you should download and play with, that uses FFT, check my video on the secret 
of dynamic layers to stretch the sample in a very nice way. I will stretch it by seven since our instrument costs seven euros. Stretches and stabilizes the sound and saves a little bit of my bad performance. The second thing I'm going to insert is an Api Road plate reverb from Waves, but you can use any reverb just to give it a little bit more presence. I'll also insert the pipe compressor to stabilize the sound and get a little bit of uh, volume. It's an around 3 to 5 uh, dB compression. I'll export this into a new file and we'll move to the second stage of sample preparation. So in the second stage I have the file open in Isotopes RX, but you could use Audacity and I'm sure there are people that can uh, write plugins to automate uh, the thing that I'm going to do now. Let's talk about the concept. As you can see here, we have the different harmonic frequencies. We have the fundamental, the first overtone or the second harmonic. Let's listen to all of this combined. What I'm interested in is the first five harmonics. I'm going to select this harmonic, the first one, and I'm going to export it as an audio file. Then I'm going to select the second harmonic and I'm going to export that. Once I exported each of the first five harmonics into their separate audio files, I will then reverse this selection here. And I will also remove the upper frequencies. We are left only with the noise of the first five harmonics, which sounds something like this. I'll export this as an audio file and name it noise. To finish off, I will select the first upper range of harmonics from around 3K to 5K and I'll export this and the rest of the harmonics to the top of the spectrum. So this process results in eight files. The first, second, third, fourth and fifth harmonic, the inharmonic noise of those first five harmonics and the upper two ranges of higher harmonics. Now let's jump to our beloved contact and build our spectral synth based on these eight files. Here we are in our beloved contact. Our eight files. I know that the fundamental pitch, this one, is a C4 because I use the handy tuning fork in contact. Now I'm going to double click to create a new instrument. If I'm moving too fast through the contact sampling engine, Check my video on contact where I give an overview of the different parts of the sampling engine. Now I'm going to activate my group editor and my mapping editor. And we already have one group. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure that this group has a modulator assigned to the amplifier, an ADSR control. And indeed, when you create a new instrument, the first group by default has an envelope uh, assigned to the volume here is our ADSR. The second thing I'm going to do is add a send effect, a convolution, and then from the presets I'm going to select a cathedral. Make sure that you disable the send effect from the instrument insert effect so you don't get the send effect twice and make sure that you activate from the utilities send levels so that you can send each group to the convolution reverb separately. This group has ADSR control of its volume and a convolution reverb. And that's all we need. Duplicate this group and then select these two groups and duplicate them again. And then select all four groups and duplicate them once more. Now we have eight groups and I'm going to name this one, five, you get the point. And the last one, I'm going to name it noise. Now, since we know that our fundamental is on C4, we have to throw all the harmonics on 
C4. It's pretty simple. I inactivate the edit all groups so that we can edit each group individually. I select my first group and I'm going to drop my fundamental on C4. I'll repeat this process by clicking on the second group, dropping the second harmonic on the same key and so on and so forth until I reach the noise where I also assign it to the C4. If I select all groups by using shift and then I select my zone, I can extend the range of all samples within all the groups. So what we achieve is to assign each harmonic, including the noise, to their own separate group meaning that each harmonic has ADSR controls and convolution reverb and of course the volume. Good. One last thing I'm going to do is select all the zones and I will set a loop by activating a sample loop here and set the behavior of this loop to um, cycle back and forth until release of the key. Importantly now I'm going to come here to the wave editor Give this button a click and to all selected zones, I apply the zones loop settings. So you don't have to go and set the loop for each individual zone. Great. Now we have a looping harmonic per group, but all groups combined together give you the original sound because it's a combination of all the harmonics that makes up the sound. If you want to regulate a certain harmonic to change the timbre of the sound, you can select that harmonic and you can adjust its ADSR, you can adjust its volume from here and you can even adjust the convolution. Of course, it would be much easier if you had all the harmonics in front of you, which would allow for a fast and efficient sound design. For this, I'm going to create now a front panel in contact to control exactly these things. I'm going to create a slider that uh, controls the volume of each group, a knob that controls the attack, one for decay, one for sustain, one for release, and a knob that controls the convolution. Let's see what kind of sound design we can come up with uh, from this simple sound. So here we are. I just linked the group volumes to the sliders, the attack, decay, sustain, release, and what I call magic, which is a convolution uh, reverb on these uh, knobs here. These all knobs that move the attack of all harmonics, and the same for decay, sustain, and release. If you click on each harmonic, you can solo it. And you can solo together the second or any kind of combinations you want. And if you unsolo everything, then all the harmonics play together. So let's see if we can sound design using this um, kind of approach, just from that one sample from the Nepalese instrument. I want to hear how the first... I want to put some convolution on the upper ones. I came up with this preset. But of course, you can also design a plucky sound, like... But you can also have very slow cinematic things, like and you can let it evolve and eat your sandwich, as Christian Hansen would say. Maybe once in a while you add a bass note.
Listen to all the textures. Because it's looping back and forth, you get unlimited possibilities. That's it. The take home message is that you take a sound and you decompose it to its different harmonics and you assign each harmonic to one group where you have control of a lot of parameters like ADSR, its volume, its convolution and a lot of other things that we are going to look in future videos. So this is not an additive synth, instead it's a kind of resynthesis um, engine is a crude way of spectral synthesis however you will see in the final version that the sonic possibilities are endless a little disclaimer this episode was inspired by something that ben osterhaus said if you don't know who ben osterhaus is his instruments are great i'll leave a link in the description and you should check him out i hope you found value in this video and if you try this technique yourself Please write in the comments below, I would be interested to see what kind of results you got with this. Until next time, remain happy.